What's up guys, welcome to The Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ordell, and in today's video, unlike usual, I'm not really gonna be giving a chess lesson, but more of a discovery of a very strange chess opening that I came across. It starts off with white playing the bird's opening with f4, a reverse Dutch-like system, and we now see black copy us by playing f5, in which case we now play d4, and yet again, black copies us by playing the move d5, creating the double duck formation. Why on earth? Would white play f4 and d4? And why on earth would black copy white by playing f5 and d5? I literally have zero clue. But since we're on the topic, ducks live on every continent except Antarctica. They sleep with half their brains active to stay aware of predators, and they can live up to two decades or more. So if you're at a high school graduation and there's a kid, he gets his diploma. There's your kid getting his diploma, and yet another kid getting his diploma, and the next one in line happens to be a duck, that's completely possible and not unrealistic in any way, shape, or form. But anyways, back to the chess guys. Why I find this opening so interesting is that none of these moves are bad. They're just weird. I mean, it's not like F4 or D4 are bad moves. It's just like, why would you ever do that? And there's actually a master game that reached this position, and I'm pretty sure it was a prearranged draw, but it continued with the moves e3, and after e6, c3. Now, obviously here, black is copying white. In fact, the game continued with c6, but even if black doesn't copy white, there's not much black can do from stopping this dark squared f4, e3, d4, and c3 pawn setup, really looking to take control of the dark squares. Now, obviously here, white is completely giving up the light squares, on c4, e4, and g4, but at the same time, there's not much black can do to stop this setup. I mean, right away, black could have played e5, and black could have also played c5, but in either case, by playing c3 and e3, we really form a wall of protection for the pawn on d4 and the pawn on f4. And here the game continued with the moves knight f3, and after knight f6, knight bd2. Now, regardless of what black plays, I actually like this setup from white, putting the pawns on the dark squares, putting the knight on d2 and f3, and now if a move like knight bd7, play bishop d3, at least trying a little bit, right, to take control of some of the light squares. And now after bishop d6, white played the move in the master game, knight e5, throwing the knight in, and finally, black decided, okay, I won't copy you. I'll play castle and kingside, in which white played castle and kingside, and then black went, you know what, never mind. I'm going to copy you. Played knight e4, now transferring back into a completely symmetrical position from both sides. And now white played knight df3, in which black played knight df6, and both of these experts slash master level players agreed to a draw in this game at move 10. But honestly, guys, the double duck formation is pretty interesting. I mean, going back to the original position, I'd be curious if there was a tournament starting from this position every game, how the games would go. Honestly, I can't think of two moves from both sides starting the game that create such a drawish position. Here, white can play knight f3 and 95, black can play knight f6 and 94. The weaknesses and strengths are right there out in the open, and I'm not seeing a clear way for either side to win this game. I mean, even if you plug this into a computer program, it's going to tell you that white is ahead two-tenths of a pawn, which isn't very much. But again, very strange opening. Not really sure why people would play it, even though, again, it's not necessarily bad. Let me know if any of you arranged to play this opening with a friend. And if you do, send me over the game. I'd love to analyze it on this channel. A very interesting first two moves, which has some interesting implications for the rest of the game. If you'd like to learn the theory behind the crab opening, click the video to the left. If you'd like to explore more chess openings in general, click the playlist to the right. Leave a comment to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.